Okay, this video is a follow-up to the previous one which talked about the wandering clip map terrain. I was going to talk about something else today, I was going to talk about collisions and stuff, but I felt that I needed to close out on the terrain first, so here we go. Oh, actually, before I continue, can we just make sure that you clicked the uh, subscribe button, please? I'm sure you did, I'm just, you know, um, anyway. I uh, have to admit that when I was making the previous video, I sort of forgot that whenever a vertex shader is used to deform a mesh into a terrain, or anything else really, you also need to get the surface normals sorted out uh, if you want the shading to work correctly on your surface. Unfortunately, the vertex shader doesn't uh, do it uh, out of the box. You have to do a little bit more work to get it, which is what I want to show you uh, today. Two uh, disclaimers up front. Uh, there seem to be many ways to achieve this. And I'm not saying that this one is the best, it's just one that works for me. I must uh, admit that I took some inspiration from Zillan's shader, but uh, it also took some guesswork and experimentation on my part as well. And the second disclaimer is that I'm using Godot 4 Alpha 8, obviously, so I can't say if, if this technique would work in Godot 3. It might, I just didn't test it. All right, so let me switch off the normal mapping in the shader so that you can see what the problem is. Uh, notice how the shadow looks blocky all of a sudden and lacks detail. Uh, this is because while the vertex shader displaces the vertices, it does not recalculate the normals. Effectively, they're still looking straight up as per the um, base mesh, which is flat. Well, we want them to be looking towards different directions based on the slope angle so that light and shadow can be reproduced correctly on the surface. There are many ways to do this, uh, but two approaches stand out. One is to sample the terrain height multiple times for each displaced vertex and uh, then offset those sampled points just slightly and calculate a vector 3 normal uh, from those offset points. A simplified implementation of this technique can be found in Godot's documentation. Uh, you can see here uh, each normal is calculated from a normalized vector 3 that is made up of the vertex heights which are offset by a small amount in two directions. This uh, FBM function gets you the height of each vertex if I remember correctly. I'm not going to spend time explaining this, you can go check out the tutorial. Now the other approach, which is the one that I chose, is to use an existing normal map and use the data that's in that normal map to point the normals in the right direction in the shader. Now the benefit here is that you can just uh, bake a normal map in Godot from a height map that was also created in Godot. Uh, you can also import height maps and normal maps from a third-party terrain generator like Gaia or Terragen or uh, Material Maker and so on. And usually those normal maps are more accurate than the ones created via the sampling uh, technique. So this is the approach that I will show you now. Um, let's jump into the uh, vertex shader graph. By the way, I'm using uh, visual shaders mostly because for me it's just much more convenient and uh, it offers me a much better view of what I'm actually doing. But for the normals, I'm going to use a code snippet that I stole with pride from Zillan. But let's start from the normal map. So I have this texture uniform to get my normal map from the inspector. Uh, the way to get the normal map from the height map is very simple. Just drag the image onto the terrain normal map texture uniform to copy it, then make it unique and uh, check this box here as normal map. And there you go, you just got yourself a normal map from a grayscale noise image. But if you plug this normal map into the normal inlet, nothing good happens. And by the way, you have to convert the sampler 2D into a texture first using the texture 2D node, otherwise it won't connect. Uh, the reason nothing good happens is because this normal map needs to be unpacked first. In other words, its RGB values need to be converted to a vector 3 that Godot understands. So here's a function that will do it for us. It's easier to just use a code snippet for it. You can do this in Visual Shader uh, with the uh, global expression node. It's basically a way to combine shader code with the uh, shader graph. So I have this uh, function here that converts the RGB values of the normal map into a vector 3. Because you see in the normal map, the axes are flipped around. Z is the height and we want Y to be the height because 
in Godot, the y axis is the up vector. So we uh, reverse the order of the uh, axis, and uh, the rest of this line allows the normals to be facing in negative coordinates. Otherwise, the mapping would be wrong because RGB values are always positive. Uh, which isn't the case for 3D vector coordinates, as you know. Uh, then we also need to negate the Z, because uh, that's what Zillin did. <laughs> I don't really know why, but indeed, without this, the normal map is somehow facing downwards. We're also going to create a matrix variable here, which will allow us to fine-tune uh, our normals uh, later. Here's another expression, a local one this time, meaning that it only works in the vertex shader and not the fragment or light shaders. And for this one, you can define inputs and outputs. So we'll give it two inputs. Uh, one will be the UVs. Uh, I called them offset UVs because if you remember, I have this traveling UVs uh, thing uh, going Going on in my setup. If you're not planning to manipulate UVs in game, uh, just plug the uh, regular UV input node in here and it will work just fine. And uh, the other input is the sampler that holds the normal map texture. We need to assign names to our inputs so that we can use them in the code. And um, we're going to just say that the vertex normal uh, equals the normal matrix multiplied by the unpacked normal. We then set our output to a vector 3 and plug it right into the normal inlet and boom, our shadows are looking much better already. And then you can tweak the normals by manipulating the normal basis matrix. So you can fine tune them based on the complexity of the deform that you've got. Okay, but that's not even the end of it. Uh, if you want even more shadow detail for an even more convincing effect, you can also use the normals in the fragment shader. The fragment shader also has a normal inlet right here. Drop an expression node into the fragment graph uh, with three inputs. We're going to grab the normal map texture, same as before. I'll make sure it's set to as normal map in the inspector. Uh, we're going to grab our uh, traveling UVs. And again, if your terrain is static, just use the regular uh, UVs. And uh, we're also going to need the view matrix. So we'll run our unpacking function again. It's the same function as before. Uh, we have access to it here in Fragment because, if you recall, we put it in the global expression. We will unpack the normals into vector threes. We will normalize them. And in Fragment Shader, you also have to convert them from a world space into view space. That's why we needed the uh, view matrix. Just plug it into the normal and enjoy the additional shadow detail. Beautiful. Well, that about wraps it up. I hope you found this useful. In the next video, I'll get to collisions and vegetation hopefully leave a like if you enjoyed it subscribe to the channel stay tuned for more and i'll see you in the next video peace in the world